Hey, hope you are having an amazing day. It's Tom. Today's episode name is Six Asian Artifacts That Suggest There Was a Lost Civilization. We are tourists to this world and we show this in the way we are present on this planet. The more we find on Earth, the more we realize that the ancients who existed here before our civilization emerged were not the primitive humans we are outright taught in our upbringing. You would have to consider the fact that us humans are told as a matter of fact that technology advances and doesn't regress. Yet in every country, in every culture, and in every corner of this world, we are confronted with structures monuments and other objects that are completely out of place compared to what we have been told. This suggests that time is against our existence today just as it was for the very ancient and lost civilization. One of the most remarkable prehistoric human achievements was our ability to work with stone on a seemingly gigantic and effortless scale, which part from the technical implications reveals the presence of sophisticated and complex people who proved themselves to be anything but primitive. At sites like the unfinished obelisk or the quarries of Easter Island, we see apparent work in progress, projects that were seemingly abandoned without cause or indeed warning, as if at one profound moment, all the world's cultures vanished. Where did they go? Well, that is a question for the ages, but what they left behind may still hold secrets to keys that we are still struggling in modern times to understand. This race of ancient earthlings left their imposed marks all over the place. Much of our discovery, we can't understand how certain things were accomplished without the use of highly advanced technologies. You gotta ask the questions, what exactly is going on? Wait till you hear this. At number six, the Ramesseum. The Ramesseum is the memorial temple of the legendary pharaoh Ramses II. Originally called the House of Millions of Years of Usamatra Seti Penra, that unites with Thebes, the city in the domain of Amon. In front of the ruins is the base of the Colossus of Ramses. On the granite Colossus shoulders is an inscription describing Ramses as the son of princes. The statue fell into the second court and the head and torso remain there, but the other broken pieces are in museums all over the world. Only fragments of the base and torso remain of the Colossus statue and the enthroned Ramses, which is 19 meters high and weighing just over a thousand tons. The stone for the statue was transported 170 miles over land from Aswan to Thebes. This would have once been the largest and heaviest statue in the world at the point of construction. At number five on our list, the angle blocks over the entrance to the Great Pyramid. These blocks at the supposed original entrance to the Great Pyramid are just stunning. Largely overlooked in favor of all other majesty on show at this site, but you can't underestimate the effort that would have been involved to get these angled blocks in place. Weighing an estimated 250 tons each, these four arch stones would have the combined weight of 1,000 tons, the grand entrance to the ancient masterpiece. As far as we know, the first people to enter the Great Pyramid since the time of its construction were the Arabs in 1820 AD under Caliph al mamun The Arabs broke into the Great Pyramid since they could not find the hidden entrance by boring into the limestone with crude instruments. After months, they did manage to break in and find the descending passages. Very little is known to us about the ancient monument, but at the entrance there is symbolic images that suggest perhaps there may be clues still to be found. In many parts of the world, archaeologists are uncovering this archaic form of Sanskrit, now recognized as a precursor to all known languages in every region where they are found. Integration of these most ancient anti-Voluvian texts into the established history of post-cataclysmic cultures enables for the first time an accurate recounting of the distributed conditions of planetary resonance as directly identified by Atlantean authors. These rare texts form the basis for a new psychoacoustic interpretation of their works. At four on our list, El Indrialo, Chile. These blocks are roughly rectangular, some as large as 12 to 16 feet high, 20 to 30 feet long, and weighing several hundred tons each. 
On the plateau of Inladrialo, 233 stone blocks are placed geometrically in an amphitheater-like arrangement. As at Tiohuanaco, huge chairs of stone have been found in the ruins, each weighing approximately 10 tons. Three standing stones were placed in the very center of the plateau, each 3 to 4 feet in diameter. Measurements reveal that two of the stones are perfectly aligned with magnetic north, while a line through one of these and the third stone points to the midsummer sunrise. At 3, Trailoc Statue in Mexico. Found in the town of Coltilenchan near Tlaloc Mountain in the state of Mexico and weighing 168 tons, this is the largest existing monolith in the Americas. This statue was made of basalt and weighed an estimated 168 tons. It was moved to the National Museum of Anthropology in Mexico City in 1964. Trailoc the provider had attributes of the rain. He created and brought down the rain and the hail. He caused the trees, the grass, the maize to blossom, to sprout, and to grow. Also attributed to Tlaloc was the thunderbolts and the drowning of people. Number 2. The Lamassu of Nimrod In 1847, after discovering more than half a dozen winged pair of colossal statues of lions and bulls, also known as Lamassu, weighing up to 30 short tons, Henry Layard brought two of the colossi weighing 10 short tons each including one lion and one bull, to London. After 18 months of several near disasters, he succeeded in bringing them to a British museum. This involved loading them onto a wheeled cart. They were lowered with a complex system of pulleys and levers operated by dozens of men. The cart was towed by 300 men. He initially tried to hook the cart up to a team of buffalo and have them haul it. However, the buffalo refused to move. Then they were loaded onto a barge which required 600 goat skins and sheep skins to keep it afloat. After arriving in London, a ramp was built to haul them up the steps and into the museum on rollers. An incredible effort for something weighing only 10 tons. You gotta wonder that if we are struggling in modern times with something relatively light, compared with other stone structures weighing far in excess of these exquisite artifacts. And at number one on our list, the Trilithon of Baalbek. At the site of the Temple of Jupiter in Baalbek, there are stones to be found that are out of this world. The stone Trilithon blocks are weighing well over a thousand tons each, and the moving and placing of these have been the subject of much debate since even before Roman times. Not only can these things not be moved in the today and now, they also prove that our conventional idea that a society could not move these things simply by using rope and brute strength, these enormous stones would suggest overwhelmingly that we are missing a big part of the picture. Theories on what the original purpose of such stones are always leaning towards an advanced industrious past in a time of history that we are told we were only just becoming conscious, yet here we are witness to something so mind-numbingly impossible based on the standard we are told. We can't stress how massive these blocks are guys and there are others in the region weighing 1500 tons and another one weighing over 2000 tons eye-wateringly heavy, especially by today's standards, and the ancients were seemingly making these things with apparent ease. The location of the megalithic structure is atop of a hill in the region known as Tel Baalbek. Numerous archaeological expeditions have gone to the site starting in the 19th century, primarily German and French groups, and research continued into the 20th century. Each one of these stones is 19 meters long, 4.2 meters high, 3.6 meters thick, and weighs over a thousand tons. The supporting stone layer beneath features a number of stones, which weigh an estimated 350 tons and are 11 meters wide. The so-called Stone of the South, or the Stone of the Pregnant Lady, are still close to the quarry, but it is thought their purpose was the same as the place Trilithon stones. However, they were never used according to archaeological examinations. It is still one of the greatest mysteries that we are confronted with today. The age of the builders is vastly unknown and unacknowledged as ever happening in a time before written history began. 
These were achieved in the before time. This is why we are not understanding very well, because the civilization who created such things has since vanished from this planet. There were many stone movers in the ancient world, from Stonehenge to Machu Picchu. Ancient peoples found a way to move stones of massive proportions. The Almec of Central America moved enormous stone heads, possibly by floating them down rivers on rafts. The Inca created mountaintop kingdoms out of enormous yet intricately fitted stones. Each dragged for dozens of miles, and the Eastern Islanders carved and moved some of the largest stone sculptures ever created. You really do have to wonder why. Why are these people creating these enormous things so majestically and effortlessly out of the heaviest and densest materials available? And what did they cut them with? We will leave it at that for the moment, guys. You can let us know what you are thinking. And as always, thank you for watching. Huge thanks for watching this video. And if you like it, please remember to give it thumbs up. Leave comments below, I would love to read it from you. And if you are not subscribed, click subscribe. And also click the little bell icon, so you will immediately get the notification the next video that I publish. Thanks again for watching and I will see you on the next video.